What is up, people? Today, we are diving into the oceans of Vera as we take a look at the naval content in the game, from bosses to ships and fishing. So sit back, relax, as we set sail into some naval content discussion. <laughs> Enhanced naval content was something that was unlocked pretty early on with the Ashes Kickstarter when the game raised $1.5 million, which allowed for Intrepid to dive into expanded underwater environments, more ship classes, and more. But before you as a player are able to set sail out on the water, you will need a ship. Ships are crafted by players and you don't have to be a master shipbuilder to do so. Actually, you don't really have to be much of a shipbuilder at all as all players, no matter their artisan path, will be able to construct a basic ship. But to upgrade that ship and get cool components of better weapons, sails, hulls, and more, you'll need to become a shipbuilder yourself or buy the upgrades off of someone who may have already mastered this profession. These individual ships that anyone can get I presume are what Intrepid is calling the personal vessel. Small ships built for a one to three person cruise size to set out onto small solo content or maybe even some deep sea fishing. There are also frigates which are medium sized ships for groups of eight for that group content out on the ocean and then there are galleons which are large ships meant for a crew size of 40 which are used to embark on deep sea ocean raiding. These ships aren't just for the group size though as each class of vessels will have different capabilities when it comes to battle and transportation. Once you have your ship ready to go in your inventory, because yes, you carry a massive galleon in your back pocket for convenience, you will want to head over to a harbor which can be found near a developed coastal node. These ports or harbors are the only place your ship can be summoned with the exception of naval caravans which kind of just go on their own path, but this doesn't mean it has to be fresh water. If rivers and lakes of Vera are deep enough and have a port, then you can summon ships there as well. How exactly the gameplay will play out on a ship in ashes is still up in the air, but it sounds like it will be a scaled down Sea of Thieves in a sense. For those of you who play the pirate game, you'll know that each part of the ship operates separate from the rest. You'll need someone to steer and someone to man the cannons and someone to repair and someone to adjust the sails and so on and so forth, which sounds like how Intrepid is planning to take this, but in a third person style that fits within the world of Vera. Those seeking the naval content will have access to what is called the Mariner classes. This this is a skill tree that works similar to the artisan classes and as the player gains XP in these different skills, the better they become at it. These skills include gunnery, which would be manning the weapons of the ship, piloting, which would be steering the ship, navigation, which I really don't know how this works, but I imagine it'd be something along the lines of an exploration skill that allows you to somehow earn points in this, giving you more ability to track different rewards or creatures on the water the more skills you put into this. There is also boat repair which is self-explanatory along with some defensive and utility based skills. You'll basically be able to spec into the type of mariner you want to be which may make 40 man raiding on the ocean a bit more complicated especially if you have to balance this with your heals, tanks, and DPS classes as well. But maybe the holy trinity doesn't actually apply when manning a ship, who knows? I guess we'll have to wait until alpha 2 to find out. When you get out on the sea, you may be wondering what exactly you just carried around a boat in your back pocket as you walked halfway across the world for. Well, the answer depends on your play style. There is obviously PvP content where it sounds as though there might just be some designated PvP spots on the ocean that automatically flag you, but if you aren't in one of these areas, the corruption system will be in play here and works as it does on land. There is even talks about coastal sieges where a node built on the coast could be vulnerable to a fleet of ships, which could have some pretty cool gameplay having players storm the beach after taking out the node's defenses. You will also need a ship just to travel to islands in different parts of the world. Ashes of Creation is a game of little fast travel and almost all transportation will need to be provided by another player or yourself. Although in Alpha 1 there were ferries to take you from one side of the water to the other, this won't be the case in the final game as you will need to build a ship yourself or rely on someone who has one to get you across the continent, which could have a pretty cool sense of 
exploration because for that first few weeks of a server's life, these continents and islands might be a bit isolated from the rest of the world because players won't yet have the tools to build up ships to get across the map. But as the servers grow and the players level up, you will all of a sudden see ships beginning to pop up for caravans and those seeking out adventures on the waves. But it seems like the biggest reason you'll want to go out there is for PvE, which has some open sea raids, sea-based bosses, along with various quests and deep sea fishing that will take you out exploring the ocean. These raid bosses could come in the form of NPC ships or even monstrous creatures such as krakens or some of these giant fish living under the waves, so you'll want to be very careful out there on the water. It's unknown if these bosses are free roaming out there and you'll just randomly come across them or they will be in designated spots or maybe that whole navigation skill ties into tracking these bosses. For those of you who just want to go out and do some deep sea fishing, this sounds as though it might work in the form of a mini game having you complete certain tasks to catch that big fish. You won't just be out on the waves in your fishing boat right clicking on the bobber every few minutes. If you plan to spend most of your days in Vera on the water, then you will probably want to seek out some coastal or island nodes to call your home. This island with the internal development name of Iceland seems like a really cool place to set up shop, and these coastal nodes will have more water-oriented influences, abilities, services, and quest lines sending you out onto these seas. And like the nodes that are inland, they will change up the world around them, potentially changing up these seas and unlocking certain dungeons or triggering specific events. Coastal nodes, like I said before, will unlock harbors as well, which allow you to spawn your ship, along with giving you services to upgrade your ship and unique quests surrounding your ship. What you won't find with naval content, though, is underwater nodes. There will be no nodes in or under the water, so you aren't going to need to find a mermaid to keep you company while you search out for Atlantis. There will also be no tidal patterns, but the ocean could change at times depending on the climate or certain events that are popping up around. What are you looking forward to the most with naval content in Ashes of Creation? Drop a comment down below, and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to do so with my referral link in the description below, where all referrals will go towards benefiting this channel. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.